Hello, this is Dr. Reed Tuxen, and welcome to uh, another edition of our Spirituality and Health podcast, which we call Decide. And for those that have been with us, the premise of this uh, show has been that we can make choices and decisions about uh, our lives to be able to live the best possible life that, that we really want to live. And in past shows, we have tackled the, uh, the D for diet. We've talked about exercise, community development, inner development, uh, dreams is what we did uh, the last episode. And today we will conclude uh, our season two uh, experience with talking about emotional development. And we're pretty excited uh, to be able to bring that to you. As I mentioned, what we're trying to do is to be a support system for those of you who are making the choice or who are trying to make the choice to be the best possible person they can be, fulfilling the maximum of your potential and really being in touch with your true self, your inner self, your spiritual self. Uh, we also find it important to remind um, ourselves as we have this conversation, as we take this journey, that sometimes you know we don't always uh, do what we want to do even with sincere intent and sometimes it needs uh, you need a little support that says you know uh, i may not have uh, done what i wanted to do yesterday but today i can make that choice and so if we choose sincerely step by step we can make the choices that will give us much better much more fulfilling and enriching lives and so thanks for taking this step with us as we go forward the premise of, uh, of what we've done also is very grounded in this definition of health by the World Health Organization. And I think that it's good to always remind ourselves that health is not the absence of disease, but it is in fact the physical, the mental, social, and what I call spiritual well-being uh, of the individual, of the community, of the country, and of the world. And so we really see health in its holistic, complete uh, context. And I can't think of anything that's more important to the experience of being healthy than having a healthy emotional uh, outlook on life, a very healthy emotional interior uh, as we go forward. Well, we're gonna talk about emotional development, so I guess it's best to start with what are emotions? What is this thing that we seem to all, you know, uh, I think sort of understand, uh, but emotions really are, as defined by the dictionary, a strong feeling derived from one's circumstances, one's mood or relationship with others. The affective, the experiential aspect of consciousness, a state of feeling, a conscious, very important word, a conscious mental reaction, such as anger or fear, that's subjectively experienced as a strong feeling, usually directed toward a specific object, and typically accompanied by really physiological and behavioral changes in the body. And so I think you get the idea that emotions are really all about feeling. Unfortunately, in America today, there are an awful large number of people who are feeling badly, who are feeling uh, sad. Uh, we have uh, shown this, uh, this slide uh, in previous shows only to emphasize that there is a significant uh, a number of people in this nation who are dying from diseases of despair. People, uh, more than 175 people die from drug overdoses. On a typical day in the United States of America, we have some real work to do if we're going to get at the emotional health of the people that live in this nation. And of course, we're seeing so many people uh, exposed to the opioid epidemic uh, and, and ruining people's lives. But we're also seeing uh, that this sense of despair, which people I think often used to think were visited by inner city people, now is so prevalent across rural America. And in fact, it's become a national issue and one of great concern. As a physician, I understand that many people who we meet may have significant psychiatric challenges that may prevent them from doing some of the things we're gonna talk about today. They may need more help than, than, than the advice that we can give on this show. And so I hope that as uh, you encounter those people in your life, and if you're one of them, uh, seek the care that you need and let the rest of us make sure that we're pouring compassionate, loving kindness over those people because they deserve it and they need it. Similarly, 
my experience in the world also reminds me that many people are living in such dire socioeconomic uh, circumstances that they too may simply lack the emotional free space necessary to implement some of the things that we're talking about today. And so I would remind us again, as we meet those people in our lives, let's give them every bit of our love and kindness. Let's pour our compassion into them and let's take the social action that's necessary uh, that we talked about in our show on community engagement that will help everyone have the opportunity to live the lives that they want to live. However, the overwhelming majority of us really can and should make the decision to consciously develop our emotional health. I know in my own life, when, my, when I have faced those moments when everything just looked hopelessly bleak and my future was uncertain, it was the decision that I made to consciously take charge of my, my attitude to control my emotions, to take responsibility for growing my resolve to change my life. That was what turned everything around for me. And I hope that that kind of decision and the resolve to act on that decision will change your life for the better as well. So good luck to, to you as we go forward. Well, as we go through life's inevitable challenges, what's our goal? And I think our goal is that we seek to find joy and we seek to find the joy that comes from being emotionally balanced. I love this picture. Uh, someone on a high wire, clearly excited about their life, taking chances. I don't think I want to take that particular risk, but this person seems to find joy uh, in a very unusual way. But the sun is shining. It's very bright. And clearly, this is a person that's engaged uh, with their center. They're certainly mindful in that they are in the moment, but they're clearly a very balanced person. Well, why are there so many people who are so unhappy? What's all this despair about? And, and why is, uh, are so many people struggling with their emotional uh, balance and well-being? Part of it is that we live in a society where so many people are alone, that they're isolated, living by themselves, or not connected in with others. Some of that comes because of the collapse of family life and unhealthy family relationships that provide tension and stress uh, day to day as we try to please those uh, who are uh, our, our family members. Many people are sad because in our present society, so many are disconnected from spiritual roots and religious roots uh, who suffer from an absence of meaning in life. Uh, that's really tragic when you have people who just feel like Life is meaningless. It has no purpose. And of course, that will affect their emotional well-being. Others are sad because of oppressive or abusive work environments. And we see that uh, a lot in the news today as people are reporting on how terrible it is to be in some of these uh, work experiences and work environments. Others are sad because of the lack of steady, well-paying jobs, especially for people without college degrees. And Again, so many people living in inner cities in rural America, but it's, it doesn't really matter what kind of geography that defines your community. Uh, there are lots of people living without well-paying jobs. And, and so there are many, many people who have a sense of pervasive hopelessness, no concept of the possibility of a meaningful future. Others of us are sad because our society is so tribal, so segmented, so you know, we have so much uh, concern about the, the, the rise of racism and sexism and, and, and just almost a celebration of I'm different and I'm distinct from you and we're not connected and we're not one. And so there's tension and anger that comes up all the time. And of course, we, that tension and anger is fed by the 24 hour news cycle. People who make lots of money uh, celebrating or exploiting the differences between us and causing us to tune in to see which group is yelling at what group today. And so there's that stress and tension always in our lives. And of course, one of the premises of all of that segmenting and tribalism is fear. We're, we're encouraged to be afraid of the other, afraid of this horrible threat that's about to happen or that threat that's about to happen. And so we're always on alert. And of course, our physiological, our body reacts to those things by producing chemicals that make us think that we're under attack and they have their secondary consequences. Many of us are sad because we're so addicted to things, the material uh, possessions and needing to acquire. And so there's always this race to get more and more and more and more. And of course, that leads us to 
jealousy and envy uh, of others because uh, we can see what others have and we don't have it and we think our lives aren't great because I don't have what the other person has and, and now I feel badly and I'm sad and I'm, and, I'm, and I'm tense and I'm anxious. And then we have the rise of mental health disorders and people that are treating their mental illness with substance abuse. So lots of reasons today why people are sad. And of course, what that means lots of ways in which we can overcome it and lots of ways we can find joy and balance and happiness in our lives. I like to think about what then would be a healthy emotional person. And sometimes that's called emotional intelligence. And the way that I think most people that have studied this issue think about it is emotional intelligence or being well balanced emotionally means that you have the capacity to be aware of and to control and express your emotions, and to be able to handle interpersonal relationships judiciously and empathetically. The ability to understand and manage your own emotions, and then be able to interact with the people around you. People with a high degree of emotional intelligence, they know what they're feeling. They know what their emotions mean in the moment, and they know how those emotions can affect other people. Now, let's be clear, emotions are not necessarily always good or always bad. I love this little picture uh, of this young man who's got so many different expressions and you can't always tell whether or not that one, one particular face is a face of exalting happiness or absolute terror. Whether he's really happy or really sad, is he amazed in a good way or amazed in a bad way? Emotions are not all, you know, very rarely are they just one thing or another. It's up to us uh, to be able to, to understand our emotions. Life would be very dull and empty without emotions. Imagine yourself or your life without joy, without excitement, without sadness, without anxiety, without sorrow, or any of the emotions that give life its contours, its textures, its colors. What if all there was to life was happiness without the balance of sadness that opens the door to experiencing compassion for others or compassion for yourself, or that leads us to the tender expressions of our hearts? So much of our music and our painting and our written artistry comes out of the feeling of difficult emotions that give depth and richness to the experience of being human. What if you never experienced the warning signs of fear, such as you were then unable to protect yourself from danger? What if you never were touched by the anxiety that motivates us towards creative solutions and challenges? You get the idea. Emotions in and of themselves aren't necessarily good or bad, but what's important is that we don't become ruled by our emotions, that we don't get caught up in our emotions or lost in emotions. When we think about emotions, I think it would be very good to remember we have a choice. Either our emotions will control us or we will control our emotions. I love the teaching uh, that I have uh, taken to heart that says, my emotions are not me. They're mine. My emotions are not me. They are mine. And I'm in the position, if I choose, to be the one to control them. Well, I tried to think about a visual. What if unhealthy emotions were, were visible and you could see them? Uh, you know, and this picture really shows it. Uh, you know, we carry so much weight, so much unnecessary baggage on our backs, weighing our lives down because we don't take control and let our emotions build up and then we carry and lug these things around. So we have to learn to set down the unhealthy baggage of negative feelings, put that down somewhere and let ourselves breathe and be free. There's a wonderful quote by the teacher Ilchi Lee that I really enjoy. And he suggests that we have to choose for ourselves. Will we live our lives uh, continuously troubled by regretful emotions or will we release them and be free? Do we cut that cord and let those, that balloon of negative emotions just float up into the sky and we can let our spirit soar? You can choose to walk away from an emotion the same way you can choose to walk from out of a room. It's about whether we will neglect or whether we'll solve the problem. If you want a life that is truly without regret, if you want true freedom, if you want peace for your soul, then you choose the latter and actively explore solutions. So let's think about some of the solutions and see what we might be able uh, to learn. 
what does emotional development then entail? If we're going to have this emotional intelligence, what does it mean then that we will uh, have to focus on? Well, I always begin with sincere intent. What's our motivation? Why do, you know, I want to have a more peaceful, joyful, balanced, well-fulfilled life? And that, that means that you need to spend some time with yourself, asking yourself that question. Have a pure and sincere intent. For me, it always comes back towards, I want to be so connected with divine intelligence, with the creative forces that created this earth, that my spiritual life, it means so much to me. And anything that gets in the way of that, I need to deal with because I know the joy that waits on the other side. So I try to approach my emotional development with sincere uh, and pure intent. I'm willing to embrace change in order to improve. As I mentioned earlier, I have had my moments of being deep in the valley of despair, unhappy and sad. But what saved me was not only my intent, but a willingness to embrace change, to improve. This that I'm doing now ain't working. <laughs> so to keep doing <laughs> the same thing when it ain't working doesn't help very much. I have a good friend of mine who always challenged me by saying, you know, after I've uh, maybe expressed uh, something that didn't work out well, I said, you know, how's that working for you? <laughs> and I always say, you know, it ain't working too well. Okay, well, then maybe I need to be willing to change and have the courage to change and have then the flexibility to change. And that's so important, to willingness to be flexible. Cultivating giving without expecting a return is a great, great way to build on this motivation. You know, I find so often that when you give a gift of yourself to someone else, you just feel so much better. Not because you're expecting somebody to be nice to you. When you pay it forward in the, in, the, in, the, uh, in the coffee shop and you pay for somebody else's coffee who's behind you and they didn't know it. Boy, emotionally, you just feel so good. I wasn't expecting any return. I just felt like cultivating the sense of giving. And I try to practice that every chance I get. Emotionally, it's terrific. Generosity then is a key to emotional development. Being generous with others. But it also means, and this is the hard lesson that I've had to experience, being generous with myself and not feeling guilty. Being kind and showing loving kindness to others and to yourself. And then, of course, I end it with the most important probably of all, because compassion is almost always the doorway out of any problem. Being able to show and experience compassion really does allow you to regain uh, your own uh, equilibrium for sure. The second area of uh, getting to a good emotional development is being self-aware. And, 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 and I think I love this picture with this young lady out in the garden and she's paying attention to it. And I don't see this picture as someone who is narcissistic or focused only on their own you know, beauty and, and so forth. I think what, what we're trying to show here is always knowing, always being able to identify, always being able to interpret how you are feeling in the moment at that moment. So be self-aware. If you're feeling crappy and bad and, and, and miserable, look at what it was that caused you to feel that way. And then ask yourself, is this working for you? <laughs> and if it isn't working for you, maybe you need to change up. So uh, being self-aware. Only you can do that kind of survey in your mind. Third, what does emotional development entail? Self-regulation. You are in charge. My emotions are not me, they're mine. And so really, we have to have the goal of staying in control of ourselves. Take responsibility for your actions. Accept accountability. And then let it go. If you've done something that makes you unhappy, that makes you unbalanced, that gets you sad, uh, 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 despondent, unhappy, take responsibility and say, be honest with yourself. You know, I didn't do that very well. I know next time I'm going to do it differently. And then let it go. 
Don't carry it back. Don't, you know, some of us grab that bad feeling and we put it in our backpack and we walk around and then we add another thing and we put it in the backpack and we walk around. And by the time the end of the day, our backpack is so heavy, you can hardly walk and you certainly can't smile. Let it go. Put the bag down. Love yourself enough to be able to forgive yourself and just don't make the same mistakes the next time. Have grace under pressure. What does that mean? grace under pressure. You may be working in very challenging, uh, uh, high pressure involvements, but always try to stay calm, stay graceful, stay wonderful. Don't let them see you sweat. Just be the best you under that pressure. Please, above all, don't harbor negative thoughts from past insults. I like showing this, this image. Um, you know, so many of us water all the wrong seeds in our brain and wonder why, you know, weeds grow in our mind. You know, if you water the bad seeds, you're going to get weeds. Water the beautiful seeds and you get beautiful roses and tulips and daffodils. Don't harbor negative thoughts from past. Somebody injured me back in 1944 and I am still mad. Well, guess who won? The person that insulted you. They're happy eating a cheeseburger somewhere, enjoying their life, and you're walking around with these bad feelings. Why would you give anybody that kind of control over your life? Let it go. So what? You were insulted when you were in kindergarten. Hey. You're an adult now. Let it go. Refuse to indulge in gossip and negativism. <laughs> you get around the water cooler at work and everybody wants to talk about somebody that did something stupid. And everybody, and then you share, and then that person talks. And by the time you finish, you have a whole big grab bag of negativism and garbage. Do you really want to be in that conversation or would you like to go outside and plant some roses? It's up to you. And then, of course, keep a uh, focused on gratitude. I still do every day my gratitude journal. It has changed my life so much because it reminds me no matter what problem is going on, there still is that ray of sunlight that's bouncing off of the leaf on the little flower in my garden. And if I'm not grateful for that little ray of sunlight and that flower and the reflection shining into my eye, making me happy, you know, shame on me. There's so much to be grateful for. And the stuff that we have to be grateful for doesn't cost any money. And you don't have to go to Hawaii on an $8,000 vacation to see it. Keep your set of gratitude. And finally, emotional development entails empathy. Caring about other people's feelings as much, if not more, than your own. This little girl just seems so you know, interested in this little cut on that boy's finger. And together, they're sharing such a beautiful, simple experience. Being interested in others' lives. You can't imagine how good it is for your life when you do that. So we've talked about some of these things with emotional intelligence, and we hope that the, some of these concepts will make sense. But let me just sort of end up with uh, what I call the dozen uh, tips for your consideration, which is what we do uh, with at the end of every show. And we, by the way, really appreciate our audience for sending us uh, suggestions for uh, topics and things that we should talk about and tips and suggestions that we should share uh, with others who are taking this journey with us. So here's my, uh, my, my 12 tips for emotional development that, that I just want to leave you with succinctly. Number one, keep working to find your true self. Cultivate the brightness of consciousness, the power of your soul. Sit quietly. Take the time to meditate. Take the time to be in a quiet space and be in touch with the inner you. It's so beautiful to do. It's so beautiful in and of itself if there was no purpose other than just sitting and being in touch. But in this case, for this show, it also turns out that it has great benefit for emotional development. Number two, Never forget, your emotions are not you. They're yours. You are the charge of them, and you can be the one to decide how you feel about any particular element that happens in your life. Only you can do it, and you can do it. It's your choice. Make a decision. Decide. Number three, cultivate the ability to observe your feelings. Make a conscious decision to reprogram the negative information you're receiving. 
and observe as your mind transforms in the moment that negative to a positive. So be attentive right now. How do I feel? And then decide, I'm going to put some new information in and get rid of the bad information. Number four, don't wait to release stress. The best way to manage stress is to deal with it in the very moment that it comes up. Learn to identify your stress signals that are happening in the moment and then stay in control when the pressure builds. Really important. Don't say, well, I'm stressful now. I'll, I'll deal with it when I get home tonight. No, 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 no. Deal with it right now. Breathe. Take the time and <sighs> breathe. And by the way, the best part of breathing to relieve stress I found, it's the exhale. Pay attention to the exhale. Long exhales. Release everything when you breathe. So breathe in and breathe out. <sighs> I was feeling a little stressful, so I had to do that. <laughs> Uh, five, delete victim mentality from your brain's hard drive. <laughs> you are in control of you. Look within and not the external environment. Just because something happened bad a long time ago, don't play the victim. You don't need to be a victim. Be in charge of your life. So delete that from your hard drive so you never play the victim mentality again. again. Number six, remember the principles of acceptance, forgiveness, and then letting go. Nobody is perfect. We all make mistakes. It's okay. Accept responsibility for your action. Then forgive yourself and then let it go. And then pledge not to do it again. Number seven, make a sincere commitment to stay true to your goals. Know what you want out of life and don't let anybody get in the way. If you're going to choose to be emotionally well-developed and happy, focusing on the things that matter, like your spiritual health, being compassionate to others, loving kindness, then go and do that. Don't let anything get in the way and practice doing the things you need to do every day. Number eight, cultivate your allegiance to your values of gratitude and compassion. Avoid jealousy, greed, attachment to material things, hatred, and absolutely bigotry. When you see those things, walk away. Just escape. Say, I don't want anything to do with this. I'm going to focus on gratitude and compassion. Number nine, in the heat of the moment, sit or lay quietly and just control your breathing without doing anything else, as we talked about. By the way, one good thing to, 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 to do that is one-minute exercises are great. Every hour, one minute, do something physical. That'll help to reset your emotional thermostat. And when you get upset, number 10, go for a walk. Go outside. Take a walk. Don't have the argument right there. I'm upset and I'm going to have a problem with my spouse or my partner or my coworker because I'm mad. No, when you feel those emotions, say, excuse me, I'm not at my best right now and I'll come back and resume this conversation a little later. I need to take a walk. <laughs> I tell you, it works so well. But if you try to have the argument while you're angry, it never goes well. Again, keep doing the same dumb things and it doesn't work. Why keep doing it? Is this working for you? No. What works for me, I take a walk and I decide, I say, I'm sorry. I really can't have the conversation. I really care about you. I'm not ignoring you, but I'm not at my best right now. I need to take a walk and then I'll come back and give you a better me and then we'll have our conversation. Number 11, grow your joy and don't let anyone take that from you. Nobody on the TV news, not one of these people on MSNBC and Fox and CNN, they can't have your joy unless you give it to them. So turn off that TV. Don't let anybody have your joy. Number 12, keep a journal. Write down your thoughts, how you're feeling. What did you do that made you feel badly? Write it down, that way you can avoid it. Change your behavior. I'll give you a last freebie, 13. I said a dozen, this is a 13. Be careful what you feed your brain. Turn off the noise from TV, popular culture, the things that are engendering in you bad feelings that you know aren't healthy for you. Don't water those seeds. Well. It's been really fun to think about this idea of emotional development. And so as we end up, as we go through life's inevitable challenges, seek to find the joy that comes from being emotionally balanced. Life is so 
beautiful, so wonderful. I hope that every day that you put your feet on the earth and walk among it, that you have the chance to let your, 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 your whole being completely immerse yourself in joy and happiness. Transform the world around you so that it can be consistent with the vision that you have for your life. You can do it. It's under your control and everything you need, you already have inside. Hey, thanks a lot for joining us and see you on the next uh, part of our spiritual uh, health uh, journey. And uh, please contact us with your suggestions. We love hearing from you to tell us the things that you want us to talk about. And until then, happy meditating, happy walking, happy peace. Take care. Bye-bye.